today's text is 1 John 4, 7-12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. In this text, John commands his listeners, the church, to demonstrate love to one another. A popular misconception today is the process of love. If you ask someone, they would say they fell in love, or it swooshed over them, or something to that effect. This is make-believe. In reality, love is a choice, not a feeling. It's an investment. We as Christians should be making that choice and loving one another. To understand love, we have to go to its beginning, its source. The concept of love comes straight from God. In fact, God is love. Any notion we have of love is a pale reflection of the character of God. In mock-ups of the beginning, the very beginning of everything, it will have you believe that this concept of love has just existed or appeared, or that it was suddenly there when humans had need of it. To make a point, let me ask you a riddle and then answer it. The mythic question says, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Think about that for a second. And obviously the chicken came first. That's the answer. The chicken came first. In reality, when God first created things, he made them in their maturity, in their prime state. Adam was made a man, a full adult man. Eve was made a full grown woman. They were not made babies and then God waited around for them to grow. Adam was a full adult man and the first chicken was an actual chicken. I've ruined centuries of mystery by answering that riddle to say, love did not mysteriously appear or hatch from an egg. It came from God. We see how God acts and with different levels of success, we try to replicate him. What does the correct attempt look like? Well, just look at the life of Jesus. The first and foremost example is his death on the cross. Christ says, What greater love is there than to lay down your life for your friend? Then what did Jesus do? He died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. He took our place. We deserve the price for our sins, but Jesus took it in our stead. The Bible says a single sin, one act of rebellion against God, should justly earn our immediate deaths. And the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of his glory, of that mark. But Jesus, God himself, took that punishment, not just for one sin, but for all of your sins. Not only for you, but for billions of people. If that sort of love is too great, too abstract, take another look at Jesus' life. The way he lived is bursting full of examples. Jesus ate with sinners and Gentiles, a thing any self-respecting Jew in that day and time would never do. He talked to and acknowledged a disease-ridden man, a leper, who would have been ignored by anyone who happened to see him. In John 4, Jesus speaks with a Samaritan woman. This is an extremely patriarchal society. Women did not do anything without their husband's consent. Talking with a man in public would be unthinkable. This woman was a, a bad reputation in that city anyway. By that point, she was on her sixth potential husband. And to top it off, she was a Samaritan. The Samaritans were offshoots of Israelites who disobeyed the law and mixed with foreigners. The intermarried. Jews wanted nothing to do with these mongrels. In fact, when on a journey, they took a note up to potentially adding weeks to their plans by going around the entire nation not want any Samaritan dust on their feet. This is how much the Jews and Samaritans hated each other. And here Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman. We must show love to the word and each other. Love like that, the kind that Jesus had. How can we claim to know him and not act as he did? 
not do what he did. 1 John 2 and 6 says, those who claim to live in him must live as he did. And so, be a doctor, live with integrity, work in love, love your patient. Don't try to confuse them with medical jargon or give the least care possible. As a businessman, care about fair practice, not just meeting the bottom line or getting the job done or lining your own pockets. Even more so in personal relationships with family and friends. Love one another. Above even these situations, we believers, we Christians should love fellow Christians. If we know him, the one who perfectly modeled love, who is love himself, shouldn't we be just a little loving? Commit, take the time, put forth some effort to love, and know this, you will fail a lot. But the most surefire way to have that strength to invest in loving people is going to the source. Learn love from love. John 14, 21 says, Show that you love God by obeying his commands. And the Father will love you, and he will show himself to you. Simply put, those who love him, obey him. If you claim to love him, read his word. Obey it. Christ demonstrated his love for us in the ultimate way. He took our justly deserved punishment and died for our sins. We know how to love from its very source. Jesus offers us the wonderful opportunity to know true love from our very creator. Do you know love? Live well, hope well.